All right, founders, I have analyzed 100 pitch decks. This is my ongoing series. And full disclosure, these 100 pitch decks come from TechCrunch, the pitch deck teardown series by Haji. And I'm going to link the source of these pitch decks in the description. So go check them out if you want to see all the pitch deck reviews there. But instead of reading through them, I'm going to summarize the pitch decks that I thought were the best in terms of the things that we can take away from them. I'm also going to focus on pre-seed and seed decks. So pre-seed and seed because most of the subscribers to my channel aren't going to be raising an A, B, C, D, or a private equity round. I'm not really worried about that. This series is going to be looking at these decks, and I am on decks 21 through 40. So I read through them all, and I pulled out the best ones that I like and what we can learn from them. At the same time, I'm gonna show you how I would improve the decks myself. Before we continue, my name is Ed Kang, seven time finder founder with two exits. Fancy way of saying I failed a bunch of times, and that's to your benefit. I like to say that because I use videos like this to help founders avoid some of the early stage fundraising mistakes, really mistakes in general being an early stage founder that I've made. Not to say you're not going to make mistakes, but I'm going to try to make your life a little bit easier, especially if you're raising that almighty first round. I have raised over $100 million for my startups, other people's startups, as well as startup funds, and I'm part of the team that's raised over $750 million, getting close to $1 billion for startups. So we've been around, we look at pitch decks every single day. These pitch decks have helped raise $1.2 billion. So there are lessons that we can take away from it. And I know some founders out there have gotten some feedback a little bit testy saying, Ed, the pitch decks didn't raise $1.2 billion. The founders did. Well, it's a chicken and egg. Would they have raised with this pitch deck? Without a pitch deck? I don't think so. Would they have raised if they haven't built a great startup? Do pitch decks alone raise money? No, of course not. So please allow me my clickbait titles in my videos. These pitch decks, I'm going to clarify right now, have helped raise $1.2 billion. Let's jump in and take a good look at what we can learn from them. I like this problem slide, and I want to start with it because of this graphic. The graphic is really interesting. Now, there are some issues with this problem slide, but we're getting close to it. I'm going to show you how this startup started really great. They raised $1 million. This is important here, $1 million. So this pitch deck at least did its job. Here's the headline. With Gen AI, inbound is about to explode 100x. And I really like this graphic where it says Gen AI automation email business. It looks like these slime monsters are going to come pour down on this business. So I could really see the problem. It illustrated it extremely well, and I liked it. Now, here's how you could have improved this. We want to talk about the size of the market. So who's in the market? And that's the businesses. And I like this 100x, it shows the severity of the problem. I would have liked to seen it say something like, I don't know, how many million businesses are there? Small businesses? Let's say there are 50 million small businesses that are about to get flooded with 100x inbound inquiries because of Gen AI. Or you could even make it go deeper and say 50 million businesses receive, let's say 100 million inbound inquiries and gen ai is about to make that 100x worse so businesses don't know where to look for opportunities or what to pay attention to that was a little long i'm wordsmithing it on the fly but it gives you an idea of the size scope and severity of the problem so size we got 50 million businesses scope we want to talk about what they're receiving right now in terms of inbound and the severity of the problem and why it's a problem because gen ai is about to make it 100x worse this is the way you could have improved this but Overall, this graphic here, I like it. And if you can create a graphic like that, that illustrates it, well, then you're going to hit the feels of the investor. Think about adding a graphic like this. Now, this is the same pitch deck. And that's where I kind of got lost because it's talking about problems of missed opportunities and lots of busy work. But again, we're missing the size, scope, and severity. Let's get back to that initial wave slide. If it would have said 50 million companies receive 100 million inbound messages and Gen AI is going to make that worse and create a lot of busy work and missed opportunities, well, now we're tying it together. But this chart here, we don't know how this chart applies 
as an investor, I'd have to go in and read each one of these things and try and figure it out. And so you've lost me on this, completely lost me. So I don't dig this. I don't know why they added another problem slide when the first one was so good and they could have just combined the two together. So I'm going to take this out, but it gets even worse because here is where the solution comes in. Before I talk about the solution here, let me point this out. I really love that we put solution in little tiny words here, and that is good. Solution is not the biggest font, but now the solution statement, this stark head line up here is API first copilot. I have no idea what an API first copilot is. I have to infer what an API copilot would be based on everything that I see here. And now I have to read the entire slide. Let's go back and rejig this from the beginning. If it said 100x of Gen AI messages that creates busy work, now the solution can say our AI allows companies to sift through the inbound inquiries and figure out which ones to use or which ones are going to make the most money. Again, I'm wordsmithing, but you see how I've attached the problem to the solution. If you have a problem, you need to make sure that it attaches to the solution. What do I mean here? Again, I say this over and over again. If the problem is something is slow, manual, and expensive, then the solution needs to say it's fast, automated, and 10x cheaper. So if you say in the problem that there's so much AI inbound that's happening, which creates this busy work, the solution needs to say there's an AI co-pilot that solves all that busy work and takes all those inbounds and makes sure that you don't miss an opportunity. You see how I've tasked them together. So in this deck, we've gone from a really great graphic to graphics I don't understand, to headlines that don't say it, and it started off really great, but then you lost me. Easy fix if we would have combined them all together. Well, at the same time, I can't deny that they raised $1 million, so they clearly did something right. I'm guessing that they've got a really cool product, and there are so many other good things in the startup, but I thought I'd pull out the problem solution here just to start this video. This next set of slides comes from a company that ended up raising $1.5 million. So we're going up in terms of money raised, $1.5 million. It's a travel agency called Squad Trip or Travel Tech. And I really like the problem slide in terms of how stark and how bold it is, it could be improved. It starts off right away with the size of the problem, 85,000 travel agencies. So we've got size and we have scope and severity added to it. Not fully, it could be better, but at least we're saying they're losing out on $26 billion revenue each year, but we don't have the scope. We got the severity, 26 billion, but I don't have the scope. This is the question. I want to ask why. Why are they losing $26 billion a year? Now, I happen to know that it's all about fragmented tools, so we could say 85,000 travel agencies are losing out on $26 billion in revenue each year because of fragmented tools, because they have to toggle between tools. I don't know what you're going to say, but you need to explain why, and that would have made this headline so much better, but it really got close. It was good enough to raise $1.5 million, so no taking away from it. Going to not throw it under the bus there. Given this deck, it's flowers. $1.5 million raised is nothing to sneeze at. Now we're at the solution slide, and again, I really like like the fact that it says our solution really small, but you got this big headline here and you know why I said to make the problem slide the way that it is because the solution can say exactly how we solve the problem. So if the problem was we're losing all this money because there are too many tools, it's fragmented, then the solution is an all-in-one travel sales platform that allows travel agents to get lost revenue or capture lost revenue. We just have to tie it together. But this is actually pretty clear and good because it is one line right at the top. And I like the way that we show the interface and we explain here's the travel agent portal and the traveler portal. And then we've shown all the different functions right here to show that this is all in one solution. I like the way it came across. It's a little busy for me. It could be designed a little bit better, but the fact that we've got a stark headline up at the top, I'd love it to connect to the problem. If it would have just connected just a bit more, it would have been better, and it answers the why this problem is solved, but all in all, pretty darn good, especially in something that is as competitive as travel tech. Let me pause for a moment here. I have advised multiple startups that have tried to pitch travel tech businesses, and they're all saying the same thing. We are going to have to show something different. You can say a great problem, a great solution, but if it's been done over and over again, for example, Expedia is going to want to do this. Example, Travelocity or other companies I have personally worked with and helped founders that have raised millions of dollars to solve this exact problem. 
It's a big problem. It's a big market. But we're going to have to bring something different, and that's what this startup did. And I want to show you and highlight this. That's why I picked this deck out of all the others. Here is the business model slide. Business model. And I want to highlight this because so many founders get the business slide wrong or the business model slide. This is how you make money. How do you make money? And the better you can explain it for the investors, the easier it's going to be to raise money. I like this headline. Once again, stark headline that just says very clearly. And if I read this, I don't have to look at the rest of the slide. I'm going to look at the rest of the slide because now the headline is so good that I want to look at the rest of the slide. But it says right here, Squad Trip makes money through subscription and from variable platform transaction fees. Very simple. Subscription and transaction fees. Now, right here, average ACV two to twenty thousand dollars. That's a big range. But now we've got the basic, which is free. Here's the pricing, and I got more information plus a three percent transaction fee. Then premium, then pro, and it shows all the things that we do here. So now I see a business model strategy where we go premium to pro, and how much money I'm making each step of the way. And that is a great business model slide because it just doesn't say here's what we're charging, but here's our model and how we're going to get to that all my 20,000 ACV. We even look here, here's the strategy. Now I've got 2% transaction fee and 1% transaction fee. And what I like about this is I know these numbers are battle tested because that's where the market is right now. There's also other reasons that gives me confidence in this, but let's just say this is not a business model where I think, are you really going to make that amount of money? It just says very clearly and straightforward, here's how we make money, and I dig it. Next is the competitor slide. And we've got this competitive landscape here, but where did the Stark headline go? Where is the Stark headline? That would have been so good that we continue the pattern of this amazing deck thing, but it's not here. Where is it? That's my question to these founders. Here's the headline that could have happened right here. For travel agencies, we have an easy to use UX UI with an all-in-one solution. That's all you would have had to say, move this up to the top. But check this out. If we look on the left-hand side, it talks about all the things that customers, the users are going to want. Booking hub, website templates, CRM, communication, and sales hub, and Squad Trip has it. Now remember, I said, check out all the other companies. Don't they want to do this? And look at the other companies here, and it's a nice range of companies that say, okay, here's what they have with these check marks, but look at all these empty spaces. So now it's clear to me that this truly is an all-in-one solution, and it was demonstrated by the competitive landscape slide. This is a fantastic slide that allows me to see it right away. It just would have been improved with a better headline, but highlighting this and say this is all-in-one here, Nice job. Now I go, all right, maybe this startup has what we call late mover advantage. Late mover advantage is when you've learned from all the other companies and you say, this is what all the other companies do. And now we are going to learn from those lessons and do it this way, which is different. That's a late mover advantage. That's how you can get into other industries or competitive industries where there's lots of big incumbents in there and say, we have late mover advantage. They're too big to pivot around there. We have studied it. And in this case, this company, this startup has studied all the other platforms and said, we are the all-in-one solution. We're putting all this together. We're not just solving a piece of it. Our late mover advantage is knowing how to make it all in one. Finally, I want to show out the fundraising slide, 1.5 million pre-seed round closed, which is fantastic. Investors include, and you've got these investors right here, and that is a really great way to create that FOMO. But we talk about 1.5 million pre-seed round. Now, I always say this, this is my formula. We are raising X amount of dollars for Y milestone in Z time frame. Now check out what they did. We're raising $1.5 million, and we're talking about the use of funds, pretty good here. And we're talking about for Y milestone, here's the revenue in 18 months that we're going to unlock $2.5 million in revenue. Now, if you've hung around me long enough, I can't stand it when people say for 18 months of runway. But the reason this works is because it just didn't say we're raising $1.5 million for 18 months runway. Then it looks like you're just raising money for raising money's sake and you wanna to get to the next round. But this says very clearly, in 18 months, we're gonna unlock $2.5 million in revenue and check out the milestones, user growth, more unlocks. So this is the time frame. This should be changed here, Z time frame. That to me is a really fantastic slide all in one, but it's got this big headline right here with the investors. You might not have that, that create FOMO. If you have already raised money, you can say already raised $500,000 to get people going, oh, there is FOMO. And then we talk about the Y milestones and Z time frames in this section. I really like this ask slide. You should be modeling yours after, even if it's just a headline, you don't have that much information, organize it so investors clearly understand. 
Now, I want to get to some decks or some individual slides that I think have done other things that I've mentioned here really well, but I'm not going to go through the whole deck. A lot of merit in the deck, but you don't want to be sitting around for a two-hour video. You just want to pull the principles and apply them to your pitch decks. So this next deck raised $2.8 million, and there's one particular slide, actually two slides, that I thought were really, really good, especially in this current AI washing craze. Check out these slides. This is an AI company, and it's how it works. So there's a lot of AI washing going on where the founders just say, we're AI driven and that's it. Don't explain anything. And I always tell founders as I'm sifting through these, I want to know what are you doing that makes the AI different? What's the special sauce? So this is really a how it works slide. So how it works. And they explain it by the MVP. And I would have liked to have this a little bit smaller and this a lot bigger. But it clearly explains it. Our AI tools leverage LLMs and vertical specific data to automate workflows in real estate and boost efficiency by 30% really straightforward. I've got a headline that I like. It's stark and it makes me salivate and says, all right, now I want the other information. This slide is a little busy. It could be tightened up, but look at this data, proprietary data, not just internet. So now it is comparing itself to other LLMs and saying, we've got proprietary data. That's what I want to know. If you're using AI, is it your data? Is it LLM data? Where's the data coming from? tailored specifically to real estate workflows. So you're not raw dogging the prompts, as they say, you've got real estate workflows. Sounds like you metric, okay, tuned to brand use of voice. I would just say, so it makes it sound like you. This is what I would have put there. Flow for fact checking docs so it doesn't hallucinate. An email based interface puts our AI where work happens my goodness, OMG, I love it, because now it's different. It's not just a chat interface, email-based interface. I want to know what that is. And right here, it gives some examples of tell me what's important, help me challenge my work, build valuation report from this data, fact-checking. This slide gives me everything that I need, and I don't mind the business. Why? Because this headline sets it up for me and makes me want to read the rest of this slide. That's how you do a how it works slide, especially in the day of AI washing. Next, I'm going to show you two traction slides. Why? Because traction is what you make of it in terms of early stage and all the things that you can share to de-risk it. Traction, this doesn't have to be that big. I would have preferred it to just say traction right here. And again, give me that almighty headline in 12 weeks we signed check this out first five paying customers done 30 in-depth dives developed a sales pipeline referrals for word of mouth customer logos redacted so there were logos right here so that's social proof you could have put the headline here in 12 weeks could have been the top headline and then we've got quotes and more social proof. So the social proof is strong because you may say, wait, wait a second, there isn't really that much traction because there's the first five paying customers. But we've already done 30 in-depth interviews and we've got word of mouth and the social proof is what takes it to the next level. So the traction in terms of just metrics may not be as much as some investors wanna see or some founders think that they need to present, but the social proof, I've seen founders raise a lot of money on social proof alone. Here's my last traction slide and this one is amazing. This is a completely different company than this AI, but check this out. The traction, here's the big headline. We had to put up a wait list to handle demand. I love this headline. This is a great headline that makes the investors go, hey, wait a second, wait, what? What does this mean? It would have been better if it was like a bigger right at the top, but lessons created per month since launch. So this is the main metric, lessons created that they want to do. And look at this growth graph, okay? We've got this growth graph that's going like this, and it shows month over month. Check that out, month over month. So instead of just one big thing saying, we We've created 100,000 lessons. It actually gives a month over month growth graph that the investors can see and you can literally track it. If we're doing this, guess what? The chances of that curve continuing is going to be strong, especially if you got a good go to market strategy and all the other stuff that we're looking in this pitch deck. So if you want to talk about how to do a traction slide, this traction slide is excellent. Always try and include granular month over month or week over week growth metrics to show investors you know what you're talking about and you're not faking them out with monolithic numbers. That's it. Hopefully you'll stick around, subscribe, check us out, check the other videos I'm gonna put on the screen. I'm gonna go through the other pitch decks. Like I said, I scanned a hundred of these things and I read all the comments and I looked at how much money they've raised and I pulled out the ones that I think you need to learn from. Hang around with us. I appreciate, would love to know what you think. Thanks for hanging out with me. I will see you in the next video.